my dearest Jim. Everything happens faster than I am able to report. After the trial and the mysterious fire in the prison, the wildest rumors spread in the capital city. It was said that Rigmore and Dragonborn had died in the fire. Some claimed that Rigmore was not in prison at all, but was already on Rust Square while Dragonborn was killed. Others claimed that Sir Robert had been severely wounded in the heroic attempt to rescue Rigmore from the flames. Fortunately, I met Zephyr a few days ago, and he told me that Dragonborn exempted Rigmore from exile. She had not been in jail, and Dragonborn had struggled to make his way to Ruskria under the greatest strain. Sir Robert has proven to be a traitor, used by Morag Zephyrus to lure Dragonborn into a deadly trap from which he could free himself, though. I know that after a long journey through Ruskria and thanks to the help of Cassius and his crew, Dragonborn and Rigmore have managed to return to Boomer. I cannot say in detail what the two had to go through, but I think it was not an easy escape. They surely need a break, but sadly, there is no rest. The last thing I heard is that Boomer was besieged by Sir Robert. Now he shows his true face. But the city managed to win under Rigmor's leadership. Rumor says they managed to capture Sir Robert. Of course, these are good news, if they are true. I am now on my way back to Bruma, where I will do my best to find out what really happened. I'll write again as soon as I know more. These are truly turbulent and dark times, my friend. Please take care of yourself. With love, Blue. When your own strength fails you, trust in the Nine. I can sense a heavy burden, my child. Let Lord Akatosh help carry the load, if only for a short while. May I sit beside you? I am looking for answers. Tell me what is troubling you, my child. Speak freely. It is a house of sanctuary, a house of truth. I don't usually do this kind of thing. Maybe coming here was a bad idea. The light will always find a way into every aspect of the dark. You have nothing to fear. Someone close to me is in danger. Someone I've always protected and guarded. But now... Now you feel that you might be the one who places them in danger? Everything points to a destiny not of my choosing. Of our choosing. Either way, there seems to be no way out. There is always a way out, my child. May I assume you are referring to the Lady Rigmore? I have this crazy idea. Rigmore is the Chosen Queen, but if she is, what then? Then she will become Empress of Tamriel. But if I am right and she does become Queen, 
there's something else, isn't there? Her firstborn will be Dragonborn. But her firstborn will be her last. No mortal has ever survived giving birth to a dragon child. I am sure Alessia would never allow harm to come to Rigmore. You must trust in the Nine. Trusting in the Nine did not save my mother, Priest. Your mother's love is with you always. She looks down upon you from the heavens and is pleased with her son. Your father's love is also with you always. And he looks down from the heavens and is proud and pleased with his son. All you have to do is look to them and ask what it is you want, and it shall be given to you. All I ask, Father, is that Rigmore be safe and well. She will always need her guardian protector. You must never leave her side. No. What I mean is, if she becomes with child. Have faith, my child. Trust in the Nine. No harm shall befall her. Mother and child shall be blessed. Go forth and fulfill your destiny, and know that you are blessed also. There shall be signs to follow, and tasks to be done to restore the light that shall burn brightly, to purge the darkness from the land. Only time will tell, I guess. But thank you anyway. When you carry the load of others, as well as your own, the Nine shall help you carry your burden. Be reassured that they look upon you always, and are proud of their son, and are well pleased. Well met. How can I help you? Are you looking for counsel? Thank you, Father. But I have just spoken with the other priest. What other priest? There's only me here. But what? The snow blankets itself around us. The bitter wind chills me with one gust. Blood stains red. Those that hurt me, dead. The dragonborn, my guardian and protector, my one anchor, the one who was always there, the dragon and the bear. Woe to those who cross the dragon's eyes, suffer and die. Shadow and the hunt lie within. Only I see what lies within. Calloused hands gently hold, kind whispers amongst the cold, beneath the dirt. To the divines I thank thee above, for this is love. Rigmore. Hey. I thought you were catching up with Sorella. Aw, she fell asleep. Bless her little heart. Grom and Tiny are watching her. I wanted to come see you. Come on in. You got my poem. Do you like it? Rigmore, I love it. This is the one about me and Mr. Bear, isn't it? I... I wrote this after what you said the other day. And I want you to know that... I will never doubt you again. You were in a dark place, and I meant everything I said. Dragonborn, you still love me, don't you? Of course. Why do you ask?
I know I am so annoying and I keep asking you and telling you, but since Bobby betrayed me and called me all those things and because of my nature, I need to be constantly reassured. Don't ask me why. I can't even explain it myself. Rigmore, yes, I still love you. I have never stopped loving you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Say sorry one more time and we're gonna have serious problems. <laughs> I... Uh-uh. Dragonborn, there's something else. Uh-oh. I want to see Bobby. Do you think that's a good idea? I need to know why. It's been playing on my mind, and I need to end this. I trusted him. I even thought I loved him. I know it's not what you want to hear, but I need to hear it for myself. I hope you understand. Will you come with me? I understand. Of course I'll come with you. Thank you. Rigmore, there's also something we need to talk about. What? What is it? Let's get this Bobby thing out of the way first. Okay. Captain, have the prisoner ready for an audience with the Countess. Right away, sir. Okay, you criminal scum. Look lively. You've got visitors. Whatever he says, keep your composure. And don't let him mess with your head, okay? Yeah. Hmm? Okay. Yep. <sighs> I'm ready. That's a good girl. If you come to gloat, then go ahead. And gloat! No, Bobby. I... I came to ask why. Why? Surely it's so very obvious why. But then again, you never were very bright, were you? What happened to you, Bobby? This isn't the person I once knew. Come on, Rigmore! Open your eyes and wake up! This is the real world. A cruel, heartless existence where power is held by those that can kill without mercy. Ask your friend. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Next you'll be telling me that we had something, that we loved each other. We did! We did have something! And I did love you. You're pathetic. You were there to be used. As I was there to be used when you accepted my hand in marriage, you little hypocrite. Standing here all hurt. When you were prepared to use me to buy yourself time. No! That's not true. I never wanted to use you. Or hurt you. Trouble is, you never understood the game. You should have been killed in that fire. But Mirage Sethius had to go and fuck it all up for whatever reason. She had it all. You in a boat on the way to Roskria. And your guardian play-acting the tough protector. Caught with his dick in his hand instead of a sword. Ain't that right, Dragonborn? Shut your filthy mouth! You could have had it all, Regmore. Marrying me would have solved all your problems. I would have made it a quick, painless death. Let's face it, that's gotta be better than being a bird on a wire for the rest of your life. What do you mean? You know, like a sparrow tethered to a post that tries so desperately to be free, to fly away. But only ends up beating itself to death! Into a bloody fucking mess! 
You're disgusting! That's it, run! Run away, you little skank! It's all you're good for! I hope you're proud of yourself, Sir Robert. What do you care? The best place for her is a long, long way away from me, Dragonborn. I am scum, and deserve everything that's coming my way, and I don't give a fuck. Whether it be freedom, death, that's the price we pay for the game we play. It was a mistake bringing her down here. I should have known better. I don't pretend to not know what will happen to me if we lose the war, but you had better hope we don't win it. You just make sure she disappears. For good. You won't win. Because for what it's worth, if she were in my place now, she'd better hope it was me standing where you are. And not that bitch, Mirag Sethius, if you catch my drift. Why would you care what happens to her? If we lose, when the time comes, all I ask is that you make it quick. I don't think that I will do you this favor. No. I think I prefer to let you slowly rot in this cell, you scum! Oh, and one more thing. I almost forgot. First... I wanted to do that for a long time. Hey, you okay? He's right, you know. About the bird on a wire. Not for much longer. Dragonborn, I'm so scared. Rigmore, it's okay to be scared. We've been here before, haven't we? Yes, we've been here before. I wish I could stay with you tonight. Me too. You know, when this is all over, we can get married, have children, live normal lives. You do still want to get married, don't you? Of course. You don't sound too sure. I haven't said anything wrong, have I? No, everything's fine. What was it you wanted to talk about? Uh, I was nothing important. It can wait. Are you sure? I'm always sure. Now go. Forget about that loser and sleep it off. Good night, Dragonborn. Ah, one moment. Yes? Dragonborn? Dragonborn? Your presence is required in the cabinet room. It's important. Thank you, Carice. Please lead on. Let's go. Ah, Guardian. Cassius has sent word. He is now ready and waiting. So we leave tonight? Indeed, but something has come up. A slight problem. It's taken us a bit by surprise, and we would like your opinion on the matter. Where's the others? Freofoff and I thought it prudent to discuss it between ourselves before we involved the others. What's the problem, Alassan? Leowin sent an envoy under a flag of truce to the barricades this morning. Since the capture of his son, Sir Robert, we do indeed seem to have reached a stalemate. The Count of Leowin has personally taken control of the valley as predicted. I take it he wants to parley? I am afraid it's not so simple. Not Leowin. 
the Lord Chancellor, Martin Blackwell himself. He is prepared to come to the castle alone, risking his personal safety to discuss terms. Whatever they are, they must be officially approved by Cepheus. By capturing Sir Robert, we have significantly changed the parameters on the whole situation we find ourselves in. But, unless we play along, we don't know how to proceed. Refusing him would cause suspicions. We cannot afford that. We would need to honor our duty to his safety. Taking him hostage would be out of the question. Killing him even worse. We don't have the military might to take the fight directly to Cepheus. He knows this. We would still need to stick to plan A. We could, however, use this meeting to play for time. As far as they are concerned, they think the obvious. That we rescued our Countess, regained the initiative, and prepared for a lengthy siege. Possibly in the hope of peace talks. Maybe Cepheus is prepared to relent and offer a pardon if Rigmore marries Sir Robert. We just don't know. However, we have a slight little issue. What's the issue? He will want to speak directly to the Countess. But we fear Rigmore is not accustomed to negotiation at this level. Up until now, we have worked our problems out together amongst ourselves, but we haven't been in a situation where only one is in charge. By protocol, Rigmore must discuss and negotiate the offered terms with him. Uh, Blackwell regards Rigmore as but a mere child. As for Leowin, as long as Sir Robert is still alive, she's still a potential daughter-in-law, and we should include this scenario in a possible settlement. How do we know they aren't already suspicious? Maybe that's why he wants to parlay, to probe us. Because if they are, Blackwell would not be bothering with small talk. If for one moment he thought the Emperor was in danger, they would be attacking us with everything they had. Leowen, although a friend of Cepheus, is ultimately expendable. But we think, because of their friendship, Cepheus is plotting to get Sir Robert released. Blackwell has to do his bidding. What we say, and how we present ourselves, will be the deciding factor for Blackwell. He will try to dominate Rigmore. He will probe and coerce, but if he also wants to see Sir Robert is actually alive and well, then we will know. That they don't suspect our plan to attack Table Mountain? Exactly. Plus, any offer by Blackwell is binding. He is as true to his word, even if Cepheus cannot be trusted. They play their noble games. They would forget all that has come to pass. No one wants to fight. Her pardon by right of combat would stand. Cepheus would become popular as the noble houses favor Rigmore. They proved that at the trial. The Leowens would still happily accept the marriage of Rigmore and Sir Robert, as would all the other houses. I don't think Rigmore would be too happy about it. But she must convince them of the opposite. You must prepare her for the task at hand. If she were here, she would know already what is at hand. You are best to counsel her. She will listen to you. I'll inform Rigmore you want to speak to her, and I will take Sorella to my room, to give you a little privacy. Prepare Rigmore as best you can. We need to get this over with as soon as possible. She also needs to dress accordingly, and remind her this is a game we simply cannot lose. We must retain composure and make her response to any proposition believable. Ultimately, she must make it seem she will accept the offer on the table, but we must play for time. So she should consider the offer, and let him know when she has sought counsel.
The Lord Chancellor wants to speak to us. He is asking for parley. Crap. That changes things. We need to make sure he doesn't suspect we have any plans. You know, Table Mountain. So I act the best I can as a Countess, without betraying us and making him suspicious. Something like that. What can I expect from him? We think he might want to do a deal. Possibly even come to a compromise. What sort of compromise? A pardon for you if you marry Bobby. We end the siege, everyone goes home. That sort of thing. Dragonborn, are you feeling okay? Of course. Why shouldn't I be? You seem a little distant. I haven't done something to upset you. Have I? No. I'm a little tired, that's all. Don't push me away, okay? As for Blackwell, this is the sort of thing I've been tutored in. I am guessing when you said we, that means you all talked about me behind my back? <laughs> yeah. What's so funny? Malasam and Friathoth are hiding behind the cushions while they send you into the room. Yeah, that's about the face of it. Come on, I'm not that bad, am I? On second thought, don't answer that. Don't worry, I'll be ready for when he arrives. Don't know what I'm going to do with my hair, though. But I'll make an effort. You look great. Don't worry about it. The plan is to consider any proposals, and we will let him know to buy time. Has Cassius been in contact? Yes, he's waiting for us. We leave as soon as possible. Dragonborn, this might be the only time we have alone for some time. Hey, we better hurry up. Blackwell could be here shortly. Yeah, I guess. I'll see you in the cabinet room then. Sure, sure. See you then. Ah, Guardian. Blackwell has arrived and is waiting. Is the Countess prepared? She's as ready as she'll ever be. Let's hope she doesn't falter. I know how fragile she can be. She'll manage for your thought. Don't you worry. <laughs>